Hey, I'm Nick with SVS here with the legendary Ed Mullen. How you doing, Ed? Good, Nick. Uh, and today we're going to talk about something that I think anyone who owns a subwoofer has experienced before. You're watching an action movie or you're listening to some music and you get this big action sequence. You get some loud sort of bass output and everything in your room starts rattling. Or, you know, you sort of feel it all over the house. Even your, you know, significant other upstairs who's doing something is like, what was that? Um, and for some people, that's part of the allure of having a big subwoofer. But for some people, it can be distracting and or uh, make you perceived as a bad neighbor. Uh, but there's a couple things that you can do about that. And I, and I think, you know, it's interesting to sort of look into the science of it. So what exactly is causing that room rattle? Well, there's two components to the subwoofer uh, output. One of them's acoustic, obviously, and the other one is uh, mechanical energy that the subwoofer transmits to the flooring. The flooring transmits that energy to the walls, and then you get some floor boom and some and some buzz and rattle uh, in the house from the from the mechanical energy that the subwoofer creates. And why is it so much more prominent from a subwoofer than say a tweeter or a mid-range that's in a speaker? Well, it's a big driver and it's moving a lot of air and it's a heavy moving mass transducer, so it's just in, imparting a lot of physical energy into the into the flooring when it operates. Bass frequencies just make their way through all sorts of objects and they're very difficult to stop, especially the acoustic component of it. Uh, high frequencies are easy to absorb and reflect in the room in comparison. And is that primarily because of the length of the waves? Is that what allows them to travel a little bit more freely through yep. the walls and spaces? Yeah, 20 hertz wavelengths, like 55 feet long and it's very difficult to stop it. They move through a lot of different types of materials pretty easily. So obviously uh, owning a subwoofer, you, you sort of can have a reputation as being not the best neighbor, but there are things you can do about it. <laughs> um, you know, before we jump into the SoundPath subwoofer isolation system, what are some of the other methods that people will try to, to uh, I guess one, one word is decouple the subwoofer from the room, but more just attenuate some of those issues that we've been talking about? Right, you can apply you know, a high pass filter to the subwoofer to sort of attenuate the deepest frequencies. Some AV receivers have this feature. Odyssey calls it low frequency containment. We also have uh, uh, room gain compensation, which is essentially a high pass filter that you can employ and uh, sort of take some energy out of the subwoofer at the deepest frequencies. So you can do it electronically uh, and, and try and attenuate the acoustic side of the equation. So when you're decoupling, what exactly does that mean? Well, decoupling the subwoofer from the surface it's sitting on prevents it from transmitting that mechanical energy to the floor, and then the floor again transmits it to the rest of the to the house. Okay, and one way you can do that is by using the uh, SVS SoundPath subwoofer isolation system, which are essentially, it's a system that replaces the existing feet on your subwoofer, um, fits with any brand or model, mostly with different thread sizes, and it elevates your subwoofer, it puts them on these, these basically these duralastomer feet, for lack of a better term, and, and what exactly does that do? Well, the what enthusiasts used to do was put an isolation pad underneath the subwoofer, and that would uh, isolate and decouple the subwoofer from the flooring, but they're sort of clunky looking and, and not terribly elegant, so our thought in, in the design phase was how can we isolate and decouple the subwoofer from the floor without resorting to a clunky isolation pad. So that was sort of the genesis for the SoundPath subwoofer isolation system. And these big rubber feet, you know, people think, well, it's not really high tech and I can buy something similar to it for less money. We actually spent almost a year in the development phase for this product. We changed the height of the foot, the inside diameter of the foot, the outside diameter of the foot, the, cur the radius of the curvature, the durometer of the rubber, which is basically the softness of it. And we actually had an accelerometer taped to the floor to measure vibrations that the subwoofer was transmitting to the floor. So we would do a baseline test, get all of our data with the accelerometer, then swap in the feet. And, you know, we were getting good isolation over some portions of the subwoofer bandwidth and then not so good in other portions. So we would change the, you know, the formula of the rubber or change the dimensions of the foot. And eventually we nailed it and got good reduction of, of uh, energy across both octaves that the subwoofer operates on. And that, you know, reducing energy into the flooring reduces floor boom and it also reduces mechanical energy being transmitted 
to the rest of the house and into the walls and in turn reduces buzz and rattle. So not every room is gonna benefit from having a decoupled subwoofer. Is there a specific set of conditions that really favors decoupling and sort of solving some of those issues we've been talking about? Well, the target flooring surface for the isolation system is a wooden floor over an open space, like say a basement. If you stomp your foot on a wooden floor, you can hear it boom and resonate. And we, you know, we call that floor boom. And, and again, the wooden floor is the ability to transmit energy uh, to other parts of the house. If you're on a concrete slab, you really won't benefit very much because concrete doesn't really have the ability to transmit mechanical energy from the subwoofer. You know, if you stomp your foot on a concrete floor, not much happens. Mm. So it's really the wooden floor over the open space that will be the most beneficial. And I've seen in owner reviews and critical reviews uh, about how people report cleaner and tighter base, which, you know, I think may be uh, more a perception thing, but why would somebody perceive that they're, they're hearing cleaner, tighter bass after installing you know, this kind of system? Well, the acoustic output of the subwoofer doesn't change any with the isolation system installed, but what does change is the resonance of the floor that it's attached to. So when you reduce energy being transmitted into the floor, the floor resonates less, you hear less floor boom, so the perception immediately is the bass is cleaner and tighter sounding. So what they thought was sound coming from the subwoofer was actually the room interacting Correct. with the bass it's creating. And by cleaning that up, you're getting cleaner, tighter bass. Exactly. So if you're experiencing some of those knickknacks rattling on the walls or the windows and window frames sort of rattling when you get those big explosive bass scenes, or even if you just have a roommate or neighbor who doesn't want to enjoy bass uh, late at night as much as you do, uh, they're a great solution, very cost effective. They've become one of our most popular uh, yep. SoundPath accessories that we, we sell currently. And actually people are now using them with some other components too. It's not just subwoofers that they can be used to, to help. With some We're the seeing them on loudspeakers, turntables, you know, uh, guitar amplifiers, bass guitar amplifiers. It's pretty wide ranging product application for this product. Definitely a useful accessory. If you want to learn more about them, check out the SVS site. It's the uh, SVS SoundPath subwoofer isolation system. And if you have an interesting story about using them yourself, drop it in the comments. And uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you for tuning in.